Good morning, everybody, and happy Monday. I hope everybody had a really great Thanksgiving, got their fill, you know, got a little time down after everything that's been happening with this crazy open enrollment. Uh, I actually had the opportunity to visit my family in the Midwest, not being so used to being around that many kids. They kicked my butt, my immune system's down, so if I cough a bit this morning, just bear with me. Uh, so today, you know, I thought we'd start talking about how can you actually do effective fact-finding as far as it goes with open enrollment. I'd like to add those ancillary products, the ones where I actually get paid. Well, it's kind of what we're going to quickly talk about today. So I thought we'd just kick it off with the more appropriate heading with make the customer's problem your problem. The whole point of our sales process is to figure out the customer's problem. Sales is really just taking the customer's problem and doing a solution. So really, we're just problem solvers. So happy Motivation Monday, everybody. For those of you that are new on the call, this is kind of what we go through. We're going to start with the tip of the week. Uh, we actually have kind of a few of them today. Then we're going to take a look at the trends, which, as I said last week, are my favorite this time of year, just because everything's so nice and green and positive and growing. We'll give a shout out to some sales leaders, and then in the end we'll go kind of over the, uh, the fact-finding or the investigation stage of a sales process and good things to kind of talk about. These are quick calls. They take about 15 minutes, uh, 30 minutes on the long end. So we kind of run through everything quick. They are recorded and they are put in the HCP training library afterwards. So if I go through something too quick for you, don't worry. You can always see them again later today. So the tip of the week for last week, and I had a few people reach out and ask me to uh, send this to them. Uh, this is about the NatGen short-term rule change. So there were some laws changed as far as it goes with short-term medical policies. It's now saying those policies that are sold between with effective dates, <clears throat> January 1st through March 31st, and they have durations of three months or more. They have to terminate on December 31st. Anything sold April, after April 1st or effective dates April, after April 1st must be three months or less. Uh, and then kind of a little teaser there, we do have the new hospital indemnity coming from NatGen that is coming out in early 2017. The material for that is being made now, and it should be out to us rather quick. So the tip of the week for this week, <clears throat> you got an email. It's about the new NatGen back office. So NatGen, one of the reasons why we bring them up so much is actually the policies that we sell the most of. So this is really common for us to work with. Um, it is the new NatGen. They have a new link. This was emailed out to everybody as well. <clears throat> so it's ngahagents.ngic.com. Not easy to remember. Maybe write it down, take a screenshot. It is just going to be the uh, username and password you use right now for those NHIC products and those time insurance company products on the back end. Uh, both of those were purchased by NatGen. And so that's why they are put in one area. So now instead of trying to flip through your different usernames, you can go to just one specific area for both of these. The whole point behind this too is that it's supposed to be more a uh, nice agent-facing platform. Uh, you can you view your whole book of business for both of the underwriting companies, which is kind of a big thing for there. Uh, if you do have any agents under you, you can view the whole hierarchy there. You can uh, see the whole book of business as well. There are some improvements coming as well. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with this, there is a 24-hour lag. So if you sell the policy right away, you have to wait 24 hours between the time business is submitted and will be available for viewing. Um, that's just kind of a new thing. They are constantly working on this. This was created due to agent feedback. So all the feedback that we got about, hey, this is what I would like, <clears throat> they put in one specific area for us. So good, bad, ugly, feel free to let us know. Another kind of tip of the week is that we did have agents ask specifically for um, NatGen product training uh, because it's something that is sold so often. A few people said, you know, a few of these products are a little over my head. So I'll actually be the one doing these trainings. They are coming up on Wednesday of this week and Friday of this week. This Wednesday is the, the plan enhancer or NatGen's accident medical expense and the accident fixed benefit. This webinar should take about a half hour. So that will be Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Then on Friday, we're going to go over their new dental PPO product and their dental indemnity product. That will be Friday at 9 a.m. And then next Wednesday, we're going to go over the critical illness and cancer heart stroke. Uh, out of these products, I would tell you the plan enhancer and the dental products are the most common sold. Uh, a lot of people ask about the critical illness just because 
you know, there's a pretty decent commission on that, and that's one of those nice things to do. So feel free to sign up for those. Uh, they are on the training calendar at hcpsales.com. I've already had a few people sign up and find them. Uh, they were just put on yesterday. So nothing, you're not far behind, but sign up. The space is limited to the first 100 agents. So feel free to sign up for that one. Taking a look at some trends as far as it goes, nothing too shocking with the increase in major medical. Molina still leading the way. Short term, we did have a healthy increase last week. And this is just taking a look at the number of days we had to sell, not really as much raw numbers. So with the short term increase there with NatGen, as always. Accident, we had the NatGen product as well, which is why we bring this up so much. With the AxiMed, uh, we had an increase in critical illness with our good old friend CBL there. If you are not appointed with CBL, I know I've talked to a few people who said, you know, I'm not appointed yet, do get appointed. They're really easy products to sell. They have a really good quoting face. Feel free to go and jump on the bandwagon for that. And in the end, we have Dental, which is really leading with Team Core. So if you are not appointed with them as well, uh, we do have a pretty good dental portfolio here. So if you aren't appointed with any, at least get appointed with one. You should be appointed with NatGen, which offers those two dental products. Team Core, cheaper, a little more effective as well. So feel free to take a look at all those. Any questions with these, or if you want to become appointed and you're not sure who to reach out to, you can reach out to training at hcpsales.com and I can make sure to get you over to the right area. If I don't know the answer, I will surely find somebody smarter who will. So last week, as far as it goes, some of the leaders, so we had with our short-term medical sales, in the gold, we had Jacob Gordon leading with Golden Rule, followed by David Taxer with NatGen, or NHIC, and follow in bronze with Tony Cox as well with NHIC or NatGen. So Golden Rule kind of leading the way with that, but, you know, follow up in the silver and bronze for those NatGen products. Good job, guys. Kudos to you. And in the supplemental products, so the ones that we really should be caring a ton about right now, our supplemental sales are skyrocketing. We have a gold with David Taxer with Accident and Dental, so kind of rocking the dental products. Jacob Gordon with Golden Rule. And then Andrew Orlikoff with the TrioMed. Uh, the TrioMed is a really popular product that's sold from the NatGen line. Keep in mind that was NHIC before. It is still underwritten by NHIC, but now it's just, they call it the NatGen product. So kudos to you guys again. So what we're taking a look at, <clears throat> as far as it goes this week, is we are going to be taking a look at the fact-finding area of the sales process. You know, in the past, we've talked about how to do a good introduction. If you have any questions on kind of what to do with those. There's a pretty good training video out there on, uh, on hcpsales.com. Uh, and it will just go through, you know, what do you need to hit off right away? Uh, the introduction is really going to be setting the stage for your sales process, letting the client know in the beginning that, hey, you know what, we're going to be asking for your, for your business. Well, you told them in the beginning, hey, you know what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have to ask you questions. Uh, the fact finding is a really, really important part of the sales process. It's actually um, the most important part. Some people call it the investigation stage. Um, if you are not too familiar with the four-part sales process, every sales process will have four parts. No matter what you're selling, who you're talking to, what's going on, there will always be an introduction. There will always be a fact finding or an investigation stage. Then everybody's going to be presenting a product, and at the end there will be a close. So if you're buying a car, you're buying a washer, you're doing anything going out that there's a sales process, this is what's going to happen. Well, with our sales process, how it kind of works is the introduction, we spend about 10%. The fact finding, we really spend about 30%. Presentation is going to be quick because a lot of times with that, we're going to say, hey, you know what? I found your pain point. Uh, we dug really deep in fact finding. I'm just going to show you the exact product that I'm going to recommend. Uh, we're going to go through, clean it up, close it together. So pretty easy process so kind of to jump into the actual part so how do we accurately how do we accurately solve our clients problem well first off we have to know what it is so that is kind of thing so honestly about the sales the fact finding is about 70 percent of your sales process this is where we spend most of our time um, if you're sitting there honestly doing the best plan presentation in the world, but you didn't really listen to your client's needs, you are wasting both your time and the client's. Uh, but if you really spend the time here in the beginning, because keep in mind, your introduction is 
60 seconds long, really, it's not super long, this is where you're going to spend most of your time. If you don't do the proper work in the beginning and you do the best planning presentation, you're never going to close. I've talked to agents who have been absolutely phenomenal, could tell me the ins and outs of all the products, but I found out, you know what, it, you're selling this product because you like it, not because it's what your client needs. That's where there's going to be a huge issue. An interesting description of fact-finding that I have found is a prescription without a diagnosis is malpractice. So that is the same as sales. Um, to me, it's the most important part of the sales process. You know, if you are having issues closing, if you're having issues just, you know, getting your clients to stay on, really on the line, take a look at your fact-finding, see what's going wrong there. One thing, too, that uh, is important with fact-finding or investigation, this is where your client should be doing most of the talking. Uh, our sales process is a funnel. Uh, we took a look at the funnel last week, kind of. Uh, so, you know, with the introduction, everything's open. We want the client to talk. Fact-finding, we're going to want the client to talk, which we'll go through a bit. And then in the plan presentation, we don't. We're going to kind of end it with close-ended questions, and in the end with the close, we just want a yes. So... With this, this is where the client's going to do most of the talking. Uh, and then really what we're going to be doing is you really want to ask open-ended questions. One of the things to do with fact-finding is that you want the client to sit there and tell stories because you're going to use their stories in the planning presentation. So what you want to do is ask open-ended questions. So you do not want to ask questions where you can get a yes or a no. You want to ask a question and keep digging in. One of the things, too, is I say, if you ask a question, ask a, the question again a different way. That way they're going to say, oh, you know what, I need to tell you more parts of the story. So you want to get the open-ended questions. That's going to set the stage for your client to talk comfortably to you about their pains and just really get the whole sales process moving. Once you can get them talking, they're going to just let that light ice melt or the wall melt, whatever you want to call it, and then, you know, they're just going to never shut up, which is perfect for us in the sales area. So questions that I think are really important to go through. So um, <clears throat> you've already set up fact-finding as far as it goes with the introduction. There are five main areas of fact-finding, okay? Things that you need to know uh, that are going to help you find what your client's pain point is so there's five areas to kind of hit pretty hard uh, the first one is right away is going to be their current insurance situation uh, which is going to be the reason for their call and keep in mind we're taking a look during open enrollment you're saying you know what? I really don't care maybe you do maybe they've been on a short term or maybe they've been on a major medical only uh, what kind of insurance have they had in the past maybe they're not insured which you know isn't as common anymore but current insurance situation is important to find out you know, if they've been on a short term and they say, hey, you know what, I got really sick and these are my issues, hey, we could find out maybe what they had, you know, and kind of dig in that way. Uh, if they said, you know, I've only been on major medical, it's way too expensive, that might set up the call for us to start talking about, hey, you know what, we have these other options. You may be subject to a penalty, but guess what, in the long run, it's going to be a lot cheaper, <clears throat> okay? Another one is we're going to take a look at will be, you know, what, what is the reason for their call? It's the why. Why did they pick up the phone? Why are they calling you? Um, you know, what I like to start out with is out of all the plans that you've been seeing around, what about them have you not liked that caused you to call me today? I, I like to ask that. That's kind of a powerful loaded question because they're going to say, you know, I was shopping on Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and I absolutely hated, uh, you know, the prices that I was seeing. So you can start the conversations that way. Okay, so the prices have you seen are those, um, what has made them look inexpensive to you? Was it the price of the deductible? Was it going to be the price of the co-pays? And start getting the client to talk that way. <clears throat> the reason for their call, I know it seems kind of stupid, kind of, kind of silly, really important <clears throat> with that. So current insurance situation, you know, I want to figure out what have you had in the past, what have you done in the past, I want to figure out what's your past. Reason for the calls, I want to figure out what's going on right now. The rest of them are future questions. So I start in the past, <clears throat> I get to the present, so you know, what, what's the reason for your call. I want to find the real pain point too. If you think the client is kind of BSing you, don't uh, be, 
don't stop and keep re-asking the reason for your call. Like, why are you calling me? What made you pick up the phone? Well, I need insurance. I get that, you know, everybody needs insurance this time of year, but uh, there's a lot of ways for you to do it online. What made you want to go and call a broker? Is it because I have access to all these different products? You know, kind of get them going that way. One thing too, especially during open enrollment, is that we want to work with plan usage. So we kind of go through their past, as I told you. Uh, we're going through why are they calling you, but their future. So the plan usage are things that are going to help you pick out what's going to be the right thing. <clears throat> I really dig into five things with my plan usage. So anybody on this insurance package, uh, take any prescriptions now, including anything for cold and flu. So, you know, as far as it goes with prescriptions, be that over the counter. That way you can kind of dig in. Maybe they have somebody who gets sick a lot. Maybe they're on a super expensive prescription. So you can start thinking about, hmm, max out of pocket there. And then about how many times a year do you or anybody on this policy oh, go to the doctor? Just on average, looking for a number here. And then you can kind of talk about what do they go to the doctor for? Maybe there's somebody who really loves their well checks. Maybe it's somebody who hasn't ever done a well check. You know, if they go in for those well checks, that's going to be a good idea to drive you kind of the major medical. If they're sitting there and, you know, that they're no interest, they don't really ever do them. That's fine. We can take a look at a short term. Here's a kind of important one for you too. And so in the past 10 years, I'm just looking for a number here. In the past 10 years, uh, how many times have anybody in the family had over $1,000 in medical bills? They will tell you stories here. You know, $1,000 in medical bills, what's that going to tell you? How often does somebody get injured and how big of a deductible do you really need? You know, as far as it goes with your max out of pocket, if it's somebody who's, you know, I've never actually hit that. I mean, the most I've ever had in a year is $250. That's going to give me an idea of, you know what, maybe we could take a look at having you have a higher max out of pocket and we can add in those really good ancillary products. Maybe it's somebody who says, you know what, my son hits it every year because he is just an absolute klutz. You know, he was walking and fell down the stairs. He was trying to climb up a ladder, fell over and broke his shoulder. Great. So we really need to make sure we have those accident products on there. So this is going to start giving you an idea of what their exposure is. Another thing will be... So do you have anything as far as it goes, you know, for, for surgeries or appointments scheduled in the future? Uh, keep in mind, you know, with these major medical policies right now, it doesn't matter. I just want to make sure we're going to get you the right coverage. So them really taking a look, start thinking about, you know, I have this huge surgery scheduled next year. You know what? I have absolutely nothing. I don't plan on having anything. I hate going to the doctor. I never want to see it. Again, helps kind of with the total exposure. And the last one. So you're anybody on the policy have any uh, family that have any uh, you know health histories that you want me to take into consideration? Or do you have any really big concerns that you want me to make sure that this plan is going to cover for you? These are for ancillary products. All these questions are really going to tell you. Minus <clears throat> the first two, the last ones are really going to tell you. Maybe you know they're really really worried about you know getting hospitalized for pneumonia. For example, then you know what, they have, NatGen has that AME with the sickness rider. Maybe they've had somebody who has had cancer in the past. You want to take a look at that. Maybe make sure you're going to add a critical illness. Maybe they have somebody who's a klutz. Maybe they know a family member who, you know, 10 years ago had to actually sell their house to pay for their medical bills. These are all really thing, easy things to do. Keep in mind, really, you can start digging in more with all these. These are just surface level questions. <clears throat> Don't be afraid to jump back in and kind of dig a little harder with the plan usage. You want them to sit there and talk, okay, so you, you've hit the $1,000 medical bills three times in the past 10 years. Can you tell me a little bit about that? So your mom had what type of cancer? Let's dig in about that. Okay, so you're on this prescription and this prescription, what is it for? You know, are these things that you're gonna continuously be taking in the future? So you like to go to the doctor three times a year. What are your visits? What do you like to go in for? So these are gonna help you kind of plan and really dig in. A few other things with the fact finding as well, it's a budget. So we need to make sure we're going to get a fairly accurate bu budget. So if I could get you the best healthcare package in the world, uh, but if I haven't kept it affordable, I really haven't helped you today, right? Okay, so what is an affordable monthly budget range I need to stick with in? People hate telling budgets because you know what? They say, you're going to tell me this budget, you're going to get right up to the dollar amount. No, that's not what my plan is. What is comfortable for you? Right? What is an affordable monthly budget that I need to stick within? 
Because if I sit there and someone says, well, I'm paying $700, I get that. You called me because that's not affordable. What is affordable? Because maybe, you know what? You're going to have to do the short term. They don't make enough money. Major medicals are completely out of the question. Budget's important. I actually will not move on until I get a budget. And I would recommend you doing the exact same. Customers are going to say, you know what, I'm not going to tell you. I get that, but you know what? I have policies here that go all the way up to $2,000. So is a $2,000 policy affordable? No, it's not. Okay. So I have a lot of policies here on the $1,500 range. Is that affordable? And so we start playing the dollar game. If you have to play the dollar game, do it. I mean, your biggest thing is if someone says $300 affordable, and you say, you know what? I can get you really cheap short term for $200. I can add on an accident medical expense and a critical illness. going to get you all the way to the $300 mark. And it's going to cover them with really bad really great coverage just in case the big what if happens. Also right now, start date is kind of easy, but if someone says, hey, you know what, I need a policy to start ASAP, we know that we can write a 30-day short term and then we can get a major medical policy starting January 1st if they are currently uninsured. So start date's a big one because maybe they said, you know what, I like to have a 30-day gap at the beginning of the year because it's going to just be cheaper for me, so can we write a policy that starts February 1st? There are people out there, they are now a lot more savvy. So this will kind of let you know, too, how educated your consumer is. One thing with everything you're going to do in fact-finding as well that will really help you get them to talk is you're going to hear it out, you're going to feed it back, and you're going to clarify. So you're going to let the client talk, you're going to repeat it back, and then you're going to say, is that right? You know, so, okay, so you said, yeah, you told me January 1st is the start date that you need, right? Yep, okay. You're going to feel like you're talking like a parrot. So $300 is going to be affordable to you, right? Yep, okay. You're going to feel like a parrot talking, but not. They're going to think, oh, wow, this person's really, really listening to me. When all you're doing is just listening to what they say, clearing it, feeding it back, and making sure that that's right. A lot of times clients will say, well, no, actually $300 isn't affordable. Well, no, that's not really what I went to the doctor for. And you're like, well, you just told me that. Uh, it's the way the human mind works. Uh, if you repeat something back, and they will more likely tell you the truth the second time, and either agree or disagree, because that's going to give them a second to say, you know what, that's actually not what I meant, or that's not what I said. So keep that in mind, hear it out, feed it back, and clarify. So at the end of all the fact-finding, there's a huge thing that you need to do. So fact-finding, you're like, yep, okay, so I go through, I'm going to talk about these five questions, I'm really going to talk about their past, their present, and their future. You also have to end in summarizing everything that you found. I'm not talking about why they went to the doctor, but it's going to be more about what they're looking for in a plan. Okay, so you're looking for insurance today because, and you're going to reiterate the reason for that they called you, right? Okay, good. So to me, it sounds like you're looking for a plan that's going to, and then you're going to say how it's going to fix what their pain points are. That's going to start on January 1st, and we need to keep this below the $300 budget. Is that right? So yeah, you went through, you heard out, you fed it back and clarified, you dug into everything. But really at the end, you want to summarize everything that happens. Why? Because it's going to make sure that you are on the same page. Because maybe by then somebody thought about, you know what, actually I want my policy to also do this. Or you know what, I don't really need that. Or $300 is too much. It gives them the last chance to say yes. When you go through, this is basically a close, honestly. So you're going to look for, you're going to buy a policy for me today. If I can fix your pain point, start it on this date and keep it below that budget. Is that right? And when they give you the yes there, that is your sign for a close. Okay. So summarization statements are important. You get them to agree what they want. And it also makes sure you are not missing anything. So fact finding is really more than just those five questions. Uh, you know, really digging into those, so current situation, why, what their consumption of the plan is, the one in the budget. It's also, hey, you know what, I need to summarize at the end and get ready for you to present the plan because if you'd like everything from me, you are going to buy today, right? So that's kind of the fact finding. There's good videos about fact finding as well at hcpsales.com, but if you do have any questions about what we went through today, any of the products, any of the tips of the week, feel free to reach out at training at hcpsales.com. That actually leads right to me, Trainer Dan. So if you say, hey, Trainer Dan, I have some questions for you. Don't ever hesitate. So I thought we'd end with a pretty good quote. A satisfied customer is the best business strategy of all. Keep in mind, if somebody likes you, they are more likely to tell a friend and family. If someone doesn't like you, they're more likely to tell 10 people. So 
keep people happy, uh, you know, keep them good and going. If you need anything, reach out at training at hcpsales.com, but if not, have an absolutely great week and get ready for some good sales, guys. Have a good Monday.